Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about vital pulp therapy. In this video, I will talk about the materials used in vital pulp therapy and the procedures in vital pulp therapy. So let's dive into the topic. There are two widely used materials in vital pulp therapy. First of them being calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide stimulates the secondary odontoblast to repair with a dentinal bridge formation. So there are these things called as undifferentiated mesenchymal cells and they can be different cells depending on what they are asked to do. They are like stem cells and calcium hydroxide can stimulate these cells to become secondary odontoblast which then are in turn stimulated to form tertiary dentin. This tertiary dentin is a barrier that can protect the pulp. So that's how calcium hydroxide works and it does so by having a pH that is very high, it's at like 12.5, which cauterizes the tissue, irritates the cells and also kills the bacteria. The next one that we are going to talk about is mineral trioxide aggregate, also commonly called as MTA. And this one does something a bit differently. It stimulates the cementoblast to produce hard tissue. So calcium hydroxide actually targeted the odontoblast to form dentin, whereas MTA targets the cementoblast to form hard tissue. So from the name, we know that it's an aggregate of minerals and these minerals are calcium, silicon and aluminum. But there are a few downsides to this material. The first one being that it has a long setting time. It's nearly three hours. And the second one is that it contains bismuth oxide, which acts as an opacifier which means that it allows it to be detected on an x-ray as a radio opaque image but it but this material can leak and stain the teeth so it's not a good option for the anterior teeth but in every other aspect it's a superior product when compared to calcium hydroxide and there are three things that it does really well the first one is that it seals really well as it sets in the presence of moisture. So isolation is not a big issue here as it sets in the presence of saliva. The second one is it's a great antimicrobial agent similar to calcium hydroxide. And the third one is that it's non-resorbable whereas calcium hydroxide is very resorbable. MTA is both non-resorbable and biocompatible and hence it's a great sealing agent. So for MTA, you could remember it as there are three trees. There it consists of three minerals. It has a three hour setting time and there are three things that make it a very useful material. So now we come to the next section of our video which is the vital pulp therapy. Vital pulp therapy includes those treatment options for a pulp that is vital and you want to maintain the vitality but there is some sort of exposure, trauma or something that is troubling the pulp but the pulp is vital and you want to maintain its vitality. On this slide I have mentioned all the vital and the non-vital pulp therapies. So our first one in this section is indirect pulp capping. And this is a scenario where you would use calcium hydroxide or resin modified glass ionomer restoration material and it's placed on a thin partition of remaining dentin, which if removed might expose the healthy pulp. Always remember the status of the pulp here is a healthy pulp. The indications for this procedure would be in a deep carry situation that is approximating the pulp. So if you were in a situation where you're removing the caries and you get to remove the sound tooth structure on the axial and on the sides of the preparation and now you're getting pretty close to the pulp tissue 
and you still have some queries that if re which removed might expose the pulp we elect to leave that carrier's dentin there and place an indirect pulp cap so it's a scenario where it's not touching the pulp but you are quite close like less than a millimeter away from the pulp and an indirect pulp cap would be like pacing a calcium hydroxide lining at the bottom and a resin modified glass inomer cement on the top this is because we know that calcium hydroxide is resorbable and it would dissolve in saliva hence we want to protect it from getting dissolved with a resin modified glass inomer cement so this was about indirect pulp cap the next one in the section is direct pulp cap so it's a scenario where we have calcium hydroxide placed directly on a healthy pulp exposure. So we reached a point where the pulp is now exposed and we have to cover it and protect it. So DPC would be a treatment of choice in the following situations. In a trauma situation where the tooth is fractured and the pulp exposure occurred less than 24 hours ago. So we want to save the pulp tissue as much as possible by capping it or covering it with calcium hydroxide. The next scenario would be in a curious or a mechanical exposure that occurred less than 2 mm across. So in a direct indirect pulp cap scenario where we get a bit too deep and we have a pinpoint exposure. So your direct pulp capping would be a nice option to save the pulp tissue and a, and a hard tissue barrier would hopefully form within 6 weeks. So when compared to indirect pulp cap, a direct pulp cap has a less favorable prognosis. As instead of maintaining a thin partition of dentine as in an indirect pulp cap, we are now relying on the odontoblast to create a tertiary dentin bridge. So you could also sum it up as that we are right up against the pulp in a direct pulp cap situation and the deeper we are the less favorable prognosis we would have. So this was about direct pulp cap. The next one is the CVEC pulpotomy. It's also known as partial pulpotomy or shallow pulpotomy and it involves the removal of small portion of coronal diseased pulp. So if you were in a situation where you were removing this deep caries and the bacteria and the toxins now have infiltrated the pulp and the pulp is inflamed and you can tell so by profuse bleeding and the pulp exposure. So we want to remove this and we are too far for the pul direct pulp cap situation as it's not a pinpoint exposure and we can't control the bleeding. So a uh, CVAC pulpotomy would be a treatment of choice in this situation. Also in a situation of traumatic exposure that has occurred more than 24 hours ago. So it would be a situation where the pulp now has been exposed to the elements for a longer time. So you would have to remove a, of the, a little portion of the pulp that has been exposed. Also this would be a treatment of choice for a carious or mechanical exposure that is larger than 2 mm across. Where you would not uh, elect to do a direct pulp cap as the risk of failure would be greater than the potential benefits. So this was about CVEC pulpotomy. The next one is full pulpotomy, which is removal of the full coronal diseased pulp. So pulpotomy is, the, is only the coronal pulp tissue that is being removed, that is the crown part of the tooth. It would be a treatment of choice in traumatic exposure situation where the time elapsed is more than 72 hours. So now we are too far gone for a direct pulp cap or CVEC pulpotomy. Hence we opt for the full pulpotomy and remove the entire coronal pulp. In a primary tooth 
this is a procedure that would be done on the teeth that are vital and restorable with a pulp exposure and it's ideal for the tooth to be asymptomatic. Most of the pulpotomies in primary teeth are done in order to save them to serve their function which is space maintenance. As in primary tooth pulpotomy, you remove the coronal pulp tissue and you place a medicament with a cotton pellet right over the orifices of the pulp canal. And there is an area of fixation that occurs where the pulp comes in contact with the medicament. And this medicament renders it resistant to enzymatic breakdown and you have an area of coagulation necrosis. So that's the area where the pulp tissue dies but you have some vital tissue in the canals and hence the tooth can maintain the vitality. On this you would place a zinc oxide eugenol core built up and a stainless steel crown on the top of that. Also keep in mind that CVEC pulpotomy and the regular pulpotomy may not be indicated for mature permanent teeth as they may induce undesirable calcification in the canal. The last one in the vital pulp therapy series is apexogenesis. So apexogenesis means formation of the root or formation of the apex. So the main aim here is to maintain pulp vitality in order to stimulate continued root development so that the body allows to make a stronger root. So it's a vital pulp therapy where the pulp is diseased but healthy and we want to maintain the vitality for the so that it finishes root development. So we are going to use any of the materials that we talked about previously in the video like calcium hydroxide or MTA. So apexogenesis technically includes any of the procedures of the vital pulp therapy like the indirect pulp cap, direct pulp cap, CVEC pulpotomy or pulpotomy performed on an immature permanent teeth. So basically, all the vital pulp therapies when performed on immature permanent teeth where the root is still developing would be referred as apexogenesis because the entire aspect of this is that we are seeking continued root development to form a sturdy root. So let's consider a scenario where you have a pulp exposure which occurred less than 24 hours ago. And it's an immature tooth so you would do a direct pulp cap so technically speaking it would be direct pulp cap and apexogenesis as we have a goal to finish the root development also apexogenesis is contraindicated in avulsed necrotic and non-restorable tooth also in cases of severe horizontal root fracture so that was about apexogenesis. In contrast to apexogenesis, apexification is a non-vital pulp therapy as it's done on a tooth that is not alive. So it's all about attaining a root and closure in contrast to apexogenesis which is the development of the root. So in apexification, you would disinfect the root canal followed by the induction of an acceptable apical barrier. So to block the ends of the root that have not finished developing yet. So both the apexogenesis and apexification treatments are done on immature permanent root where the root has not formed development, its development. But genesis, apexogenesis is on a vital tooth and apexification is on a non-vital tooth. So that was all about the vital pulp therapy and I hope it was helpful to you all.